Holy cow. Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, today I have Verizon's 5G home internet plans. Now they just redid this with their C-band um, frequencies that they've released. I've had their 5G ultra wide band, which is only in very select areas of big cities. And then I've played with T-Mobile's home internet. I've used that a lot. In fact, that's what I'm using right now for my main ISP. But I've also played with AT&T fixed wireless. So I'm excited to try this one out because Verizon C-Band is supposed to give uh, these other 5G um, you know, frequencies a run for their money and is way more widespread than their other ultra wide band, the millimeter wave stuff. So let's open it up, get it set up, and let's test it for speed. All right, so there's very little in the box. There's really three things. There's an ethernet cable, an AC adapter, and the unit itself. And then if you look on the unit itself, down here in the bottom, it only has um, the power adapter cord uh, socket, and then it has two ethernet cables. But if you look underneath this silicone um, little cover here, let me open it up for you. All right, so we pop open that silicone cover then you can see there is actually a USB-C port right there and a screw and that screw is for the SIM card but that USB-C port is really a diagnostic port and a flashing port for Verizon it's not made for you and me the consumer and then you're not supposed to take the SIM card out or shouldn't need to take the SIM card out so um, they probably don't want you to know about that Anyways, um, besides that, the last thing I do want to point out is uh, to the other side of the Ethernet ports is a little reset button that you could press in there with a small paper clip to reset the unit. And then on the back of the unit is a little link icon. It looks like a, you know two uh, links, two chain links together. That is for WPS, which uh, is a fast way for you to connect your devices to this for the first time. So let's plug it in and see what it does. All right, so I plugged it in and you can see the little white light in the top left corner. That will be flashing. That means it's booting up and it might actually flash red and white as well. I think that actually means it's doing a update. Now in the box, the actual cardboard box outside of this um, unit box is a flyer and it has a QR code for it's a little confusing at first because you uh, you might not know which one you are. The one with the picture of the cube on it actually says for LTE customers and because they use the same box. And then on the other side it says for 5G home internet customers. So depending on which one you signed up for, uh, they, they still have the LTE plan. But this one is a 5G plan. So now this guy will take a couple minutes to start up. But I need to... Um, you can use your app to help you with the setup. So let's do that. I'm going to scan my QR code here. All right, so now it's solid white and when I logged in, now it opens up this start your 5G home internet setup. So I'm gonna click on that and see exactly what that does for me. Now it has a video. Hopefully I can get away from watching it good. Oh, well, I guess I have to watch it. Welcome to Verizon 5G Home. With step-by-step -step instructions. As so I actually already watched it. Remove the gateway and the power adapter from the box. Alright, so it's telling you to go near a window or exterior facing wall. And then it says raise it up so it gets better spread. These are Wi-Fi 6 um, units. They're pretty good actually at coverage. Alright, so I saw blinking red there for a second. Looks like it's done with that. So let me go back to solid white. OK, 
Okay, so it says I found a strong signal here, so that's good news because I obviously haven't tried to place it anywhere. All right, so now it's saying to connect to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so now I want to connect my phone to this guy, so I'm going to go down here to the QR code. And it's kind of slick because you just show that and now it's going to automatically connect to that. It actually pulls the SSID and the Wi-Fi password for me. So now I'm connected to it. And the first thing I'm going to do is go do a speed test. So again, I haven't tried to optimize my signal yet. I do want to try to do that. But wow, <laughs> over 300 right here, right now. So that's really good. So right now, my T-Mobile home internet one up there, down here, without in any external antennas, I get about 75, it kind of varies a little bit, but 75 down. But I do get 25, 30, sometimes even higher up load speed. So now this guy, I now have 320 down 20 megabits per second up and the ping is 19 so that's really good no loss let's go to fast.com and check it out holy cow okay so this is good so my loaded ping you know, all my T-Mobile can be really high. This is better. It's still not where you would see typically for a hardwired connection. You know, in in the past when I had like 18 disc DSL, which wasn't very fast, but my loaded ping would be like 50 millisecond. So that's good. And loaded means that you're you're transmitting data while you're checking for latency. So that's really more important for most people than unloaded. Unloaded ping is it's helpful, but it's not that. Um, that useful to me. So right now with where it sits, I'm getting way faster download speeds than T-Mobile right here, but I'm getting about half or a third of my upload speed. And I really do like upload because I'm a YouTuber, so I've sent a lot of YouTube um, gigabytes up. So I'm gonna move this gateway around and I'm gonna see if I can improve my upload even if it hurts my download a little bit. All right, so I have moved this guy all around the house. Uh, well, except for the basement, because I know it's gonna get worse there, but the main floor and then all the way up to the kind of like a third floor loft along, uh, right alongside the attic. That's where I typically get my best speed. And then here with this Verizon, what I'm most happy about is actually how consistent it is. Um, well, at least because it's consistently fast. So um, the T-Mobile one and the other Verizon units that I've had that are not on C-band, I will get different speeds depending where I go and typically up there on the third floor is the best. The T-Mobile one is by far the most sensitive, especially if you go to the Nokia one. That one, if you move it like five degrees of rotating it in the same spot, it's gonna get different speeds. So this guy throughout my entire house is really a little over 300 megabits per second download and right at 20 megabits per second upload. I found one spot, it was actually, I forget where, I think it was actually up here somewhere, um, where it did drop down to like 100 megabits per second, so they must have been getting some interference. It was right next to the T-Mobile one, so maybe they were uh, fighting it out or something, and that was slowing them down. So, I am actually really, really impressed with this, because the only downside to this one is that I'm losing a little bit of upload capability, but for the amount of download that I'm getting and for the fact that I can just take this box out of the, or take the, um, the little cube out of the box and plug it in right here and get that speed is incredible. So that's Verizon C-Band and right now I'm impressed. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in as my main ISP for the house and I have tons of um, IoT devices and streaming and work from home with uh, video conferencing so I'm going to test this out as my only internet source for uh, several days, several weeks. I have a feeling I might actually switch to it as my main ISP and get rid of the T-Mobile one. But we'll, uh, we'll test it out first and see um, how it plays out over time. Now the other thing I will say is the settings on this gateway are 
uh, actually very good. They have a lot of different firewall settings, DMZ, UPnP, and um, you know uh, lots of different ones there. So I will go into parental controls, that kind of stuff. And since I've actually had this gateway before when it was the LTE service, it's the exact same um, web interface. So I'm going to actually play my old video that goes through every page there and shows that here next. And then I'll do a final wrap up at the end. All right, so I'm going to go to the uh, address of this gateway, which is just the 192.168.0.1. Now it asks for the password. Now the password is on the bottom of the gateway. It's still that same um, area that has the Wi-Fi information. So let me type in that. All right. So now we're logged in here and you can see again, it has the IP address, the Mac address, the software it tells me I'm connected. And I can go in here to the Wi-Fi settings and I can obviously change any SSID. The band steering means that it um, has one SSID that is both your 2.4 and your 5 gigahertz, but then it will uh, use whichever band is best for the device. So some devices might only be a 2.4 gigahertz capable, so naturally they would use them. But if they're close enough and have a good, good signal, it will can or probably prefer the five gigahertz because that's going to be uh, faster throughput. So that's what your settings are there. If you were to, um, you know, need to do custom channel, looks like it lets you do that as well as you pick your bandwidth for your channel. Um, and then five gigahertz, I'm sure it's the same thing. Okay, so this is interesting because the um, user guide actually says it does not support AX but clearly here it does say it doesn't I, I noticed on the bottom of it it does say Wi-Fi 6 certified so uh, they might have updated that at some point perhaps and then it has a guest network that you can activate and uh, that typically just prevents access to the local uh, network but gives it internet access all right, so here you can see my devices. I'm on my computer now, obviously, and then I was on my uh, phone earlier. All right, and this is just telling you how you can set up uh, WPS. All right, for parental controls, uh, you can add a device and then you can control it. So you can add like a kid's device and then control it. Here's the network map. You can see that I have my two over Wi-Fi are connected, nothing over Ethernet. And it says it's connected to Internet. So that's all good. All right, so there's your IPv4 and 6. All right, so this is, I really want to get into the signal quality of the gateway so I can try to improve it. Here it tells me that I am um, on 5G NSA, so that's 5G non standalone. All right, so let me keep going here. All right, so that's just how much data I've moved through recently here. Alright, so here's how you can set up your DHCP server or turn it off, as well as change um, things like your primary DNS. If you wanted a custom one like Google, you could change that here. Alright, IPv6 is active. Let's go here to device settings. Alright, so you have admin password, date, time, backup, or store. We don't need any of that. Um, all right, so diagnostics is just to ping a specific, this is a um, Google DNS that it, uh, it has loaded in there by default. So I'm just gonna hit start and see what it does there. All right, so it looks like it's pinging that fine. All right, so for security on firewall, 
right now it's defaulted to the medium and then it has um, these guys on um, the knowledge service SPI and WAN blot ping okay So uh, IP to MAC binding, this is if you want to give a specific device a static IP address. So, you know, if you have, let's say a printer or a camera and you want it to always have the same local IP address, you could bind that IP address to that MAC of that device and it will always have that same IP. Okay, so this is if you want to create a blacklist or a whitelist. So a blacklist would be it always blocks certain devices. And um, a whitelist would be it always grants access to certain devices. So it gives you a little bit of um, firewall and control there. All right, this is good. It looks like it gives you a DMZ option. So this basically would turn... This is kind of like a bridge mode. This turns your gateway into more or less just a modem. And then all of the routing and firewall stuff will be handled by something else like your own router. Uh, so this is how I would set it up to use it because I have a Asus AI mesh that I want to do all of the, um, the real configuring on. So I would turn that DMZ on and then I would uh, manually pick which um, I, I need to plug in my... Um, my router and then I would tell it to have my router uh, be the DMZ host okay and then here's the plug-and-play setting on or off here's some of these ALG settings for um, you know this is again um, if you don't know what these are then <laughs> you probably don't need to touch them uh, if you do need them, it's nice to be able to uh, toggle these on or off if you wanted them to be not enabled. All right. Okay, so then this allows you to bandwidth limit some devices, and this might come in handy. I know some people will use it on things like, let's say their TV, their smart TV, or like Roku type device for... Um, streaming where it could actually take up all of your bandwidth if you let it but if you uh, slow it down it will just take a little bit longer behind the scenes to um, to buffer you know um, and uh, and this is a way that you could limit a certain device to say hey I want it to only take up 10 megabits per second or something so you could do that here but what I don't see is I don't see anything that gives me my cellular um, kind of quality on the T-Mobile 5G. You know, it gives you cell metrics so you can see what your signal strength is and your signal to noise ratio. And that really helps you pinpoint a location to get the best speed. Okay, one question that people ask is, um, they have a Verizon phone and it has C-band. Is this gateway going to get the same? And the short answer is yes, it kind of does. It should. This one is actually a Samsung S20 and so it does not get C-band. It hasn't got the firmware update to support that yet. But my uncle came here and he had a uh, new iPhone that does support C-band and he was getting right at these same speeds here at the house, like three, 330 something um, megasecond down about the 20 up so at least on that one use case uh, that iPhone Verizon was the exact same speed as this home internet and I even did this kind of close to peak time uh, you know sometimes these are deprioritized so uh, that means sometimes at peak time you're gonna see a slowdown but at 8:45 or 9 p.m. at night um, I was getting those kind of speeds all right well that is it for now I hope you enjoyed the video as always, hit the like button down below. Think about subscribing to the channel to see more stuff. If you have any questions or uh, comments of your own, put them down below in the comment fields. I do try to read those when I uh, get a chance. And then um, stay tuned for more. I'm going to do a lot more videos on this guy because I'm pretty excited to see uh, what else there is to uncover.